Hello, friends. If I had to summarize Putin's regime in two words, it would be gangster regime. Every classic movie about gangsters involves police working for the bad guys, racketeering, money extortion, making sure that witnesses are silenced and threatened, controlling all lucrative businesses and so on. Putin does it all and is the boss of it all. Russia has a government, but it's mostly run like a criminal gang. I mean, you see ordinary politicians, but behind their backs you'll always find one of Putin's cronies, looking out for their own selfish interests. And nowadays, their interests are pretty much everything. That's why they force through laws that make them richer and more powerful. It's easy when you control the judges, politicians, and police. And who cares if they destroy the country and ruin the economy? Above all, they deprive ordinary citizens of feeling like they have even the most basic rights. They need to keep everyone in a constant state of uncertainty and need. This breaks their will to rise up. Violence. Putin's mob doesn't know any other strategy to resolve its problems. And it's not just beating up some random protesters. It's killing, kidnapping, poisoning, and illegal imprisonment. They have nothing to fear. No morals, no obligations to the people, only to money and their godfather Putin. Come on a journey with me, deep into Putin's gangster empire. Gangster police. A criminal gang wouldn't be a real gang without a little help from the police. Pay off a couple of local cops, maybe a sheriff. In Putin's case, it's not just a few policemen on the take. It's one of the most elite law enforcement branches in Russia, the FSB. Russia's FBI. Half of the FSB exists to protect Putin and keep him and his gang in power. That's it. Nothing else. To do that, the FSB is known to have killed, poisoned, kidnapped, blackmailed, illegally surveilled, extorted and imprisoned thousands of Russians, at home and abroad. Examples? Mr. Nyeptsov, an opposition politician, was shot dead in 2015, right by the Kremlin. Why didn't they catch who did it? The security cameras in the most heavily guarded place in all of Russia were miraculously turned off for repair at that exact moment. Nothing suspicious here. The most recent example is Alexei Navalny's case. First, he was poisoned by the FSB. When the poisoning failed, they put him in prison for almost three years. Opposition journalist Anna Politkovskaya was shot dead in Moscow. Alexander Litvinenko was poisoned with radioactive polonium in London. Sergei Skripal and his family narrowly escaped the hit on them, but the collateral damage included several accidental poisonings and one innocent death. The FSB has been successfully covering up Putin's crimes, only occasionally failing to poison a politician or dissident here and there. For their loyal service, the FSB is allowed to do pretty much whatever it wants. The FSB's entrepreneurial spirit led them to the idea of selling their services to anyone with a little extra cash on hand. According to a report, the price for getting a detailed file on any citizen is $100. Need to hack someone's account on social media? Sure, no problem. Putin's FSB will do it for $3,000, as long as you're a registered gang member and have the father's blessing. FSB generals are well known for stashing billions of rubles in trash bags in their apartments. And FSB agents have been implicated in countless thefts, including robbing actual banks and businesses. Do you really think the FSB cares who pays them $100? They're just thugs for hire, working for more powerful thugs. Moving on to another well-known criminal calling card, racketeering and kickbacks. Last year, Russia was ranked 129th out of 180 countries in terms of corruption levels. This makes Russia the most corrupt country in the G20. Corruption in Russia is like a virus. It started in the Kremlin and spread everywhere. Corruption eats up $300 billion a year, about the same amount as the Russian annual budget. That's about 25% of the country's GDP. In Putin's Russia, all government proposals are created with one goal in mind. Stealing. 
They're not stealing from a project designed to help people. That would be bad enough. They're actually coming up with projects as an accounting trick, hidden inside a PR campaign. It's like The Truman Show. It's not some people that are in on it. The entire government is in on it. Take the Soccer World Cup Stadium in St. Petersburg. Even though it was built to make Putin look good internationally, it was still just a classic money grab. The total cost ended up being about seven times the original amount with miraculously constant requests for extra money for repairs. Repairs to a brand new, unused stadium. Another example, the Sochi Winter Olympic Village. A couple of unreported palaces were found near there recently. One belongs to Putin, the other to Dmitry Medvedev, his friend and extremely loyal pal. As you can see, the biggest playground for corruption is government contracts. It's the easiest way to pocket money. The budget for all government contracts is $40 billion, and the unofficial, official kickback rate has been set by Putin at 50 to 70 percent. Where does this 50 to 70 percent really come from? It comes from increased prices on regular people's gas, heat, electricity, everything. That's how Putin's gang indirectly extorts money from every citizen. Putin loves to use the 90s card, constantly brainwashing people about how bad the 90s were. Life was hard, but then we came and saved you all. Let's take a closer look into the 90s. One of the biggest corruption scandals at the time was linked to the wife of Moscow's mayor. Her factory won a government contract to install chairs at a stadium. We're talking about a contract worth $700,000. Nowadays, detailed reports on the billions stolen by Putin and his friends just sit on the shelves, gathering dust. Corruption isn't occasional anymore, it's systematic. It is the government, and it's just not news anymore. Silencing witnesses. Any real gang usually sets some resources aside to silence witnesses. Russian journalists who try to uncover and investigate end up in prison or just killed. This purge began years ago and never stopped. Russia ranks worst out of all post-Soviet Union countries for journalist safety. 68% of all attacks come directly from the government. Another classic gang move is bribing media outlets to divert the public's attention. Putin just bought them all. TV channels, newspapers, radio stations. Those who couldn't be bought now live in a constant hell. It's absurdly easy to find out who owns the biggest outlets. TV Channel 1 is owned by Rosimu Shetsovo, a federal agency that manages government properties and until recently belonged to an oligarch, Roman Abramovich, one of Putin's supporters. The TV channel Russia Today is financed by the government. NTV and TNT are owned by Gazprom. The list goes on. That's why for Russians, YouTube has become the only real free TV. Fighting for influence. You're not a real gang unless you're constantly expanding your influence. The goal is to control everything that might bring you money, and everything that could undermine your power. Putin and his gang have been constantly testing the boundaries of what society will accept. If Russians don't kick up a fuss, Putin's gang increases their sphere of influence. They took away our right to elect and be elected, our freedom of speech, free media, independent businesses, the right to travel freely, to a decent pension, and a prosperous life. The Kremlin gang is testing Russia's physical boundaries as well. We saw what happened in Georgia and Ukraine. Who's next? The latest chapter was an amendment to allow Putin to stay in power until 2036. 76% of Russians allegedly voted in favor. That was a nice little touch, since Putin's parliament had already voted to amend the constitution weeks before the fraudulent election. Democracy is not that hard to subvert when you're the one counting the votes, and you control all the courts in the country. Loyalty. Any gang's golden rule. Surround yourself with loyal people who owe you everything. Putin, legally speaking, can't just have billions of dollars sitting in his bank account. All his stolen money needs to be stashed in different places and managed by different people. Putin's billions are kept safe by people he met 30 years ago, when he returned from Germany after witnessing the collapse of his beloved Soviet Union. 
He started off as a small-time political thug in the 90s, and all he did was climb the ladder by making deals and keeping his mouth shut. Putin's regime is a gangster regime. We might never get the chance to vote Putin out of office, but that doesn't mean we're powerless. Putin's grasp on power is weakest at its lowest levels. We should start from there and work our way up. Thank you for watching. Give us a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to stay tuned.